Okay, uh, for both players, just uh, talk about the run y'all are on and, and going into this next game, a team that shoots a lot of three-pointers. Uh, it, it's going to be a challenge for the perimeter defense. Go ahead, Jerry. Um, well, every game that we've been in has always been a dogfight. Um, not even – I'm not going to say, like, with the teams, but, like, within ourselves, you know, just – trying to stay poised and, you know, uh, execute plays and stuff like that. But uh, Missouri's a good team, and they're, they're interesting, you know. Um, they can shoot the three. And they got a big – they got bigs inside. They can, you know, they, they got all level of scoring. So, we just got to come with it. Okay. Let me rephrase the question. From a guard standpoint, from a guard standpoint, what does it take to, to – when you face a team that, that shoots so well from three-point range, what are the specific <laughs> things you have to remember and, and try to execute? Stay disciplined on defense, stay on the floor, because we know they shoot a lot of threes. They get up a lot of shots. They do a lot of extra movements, pump fakes, ball fakes. So just stay disciplined and stay, stick to our principles. Whatever coach, whatever coach wants us to do, whatever the game plan is, stick to it and execute it. And stop dribble penetration. Um, that's a big one. Stop dribble pen penetration so that they can't find open people and, you know, don't give them no open looks. But as far as our us going on the run, I mean, it's very exciting. That's why I asked Cherry to um, answer that question because <laughs> they was what, what was this record last year? Like nine, Ooh, like mm -hmm. nine nine games. I don't even remember. Yeah, like but yeah, we are already cool. making history, so it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. For 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 both of you, uh, rate if you will the level of confidence y'all are playing with now compared to maybe where you started the season. It seems like that's was one thing that, that, that coaches have been able to infuse into y'all is like to, to, to play to your best ability or maybe maybe even better than you thought you could play. Mm, confidence is through the roof. Um, individually, as a team, like we're all gelling together. Finally, the cohes cohesiveness um, on the court is something that I've never really experienced before, even between just us three guards uh, and Ryan, of course, that gets to play. Um, we're just so – we know each other's game. We know where you want to get the shot. We know what kind of shots you want to take. So um, the confidence and the cohesiveness is is, is through the roof for real. Um, I'll piggyback off what she said. I think it starts with Coach. Um, she's showing us that she believes in us and we believe in her. Um, I mean, Cherry pretty much hit the nail on the head. Just having team chemistry, playing together, and just trusting each other on the floor, that builds confidence. Uh, this is for both of y'all. After a big game against South Carolina, sometimes that can take a lot of energy out of teams. How do y'all think, how did y'all come back against Auburn and put together a really good performance? Um, it's just like I said, cohesiveness and gelling together. You know, Coach wanted us, we talked about South Carolina um, and we took our emotions with that game. You know, it hurt that we lost by six, but um, we came back and we, came back to practice and we dripped in sweat, um, like she said before. We just went hard again. Like, we didn't let that South Carolina um, game define us. Yeah, a tough loss. We didn't let it define us. And we know every game is going to be a dog fight. And it's a different game plan for each game. So we know we couldn't go in there hanging our heads and being down on ourselves. I feel like we played a great game against South Carolina. Looking forward to seeing them again. Coach, uh, LSU hasn't been ranked number 12 in almost a decade. What's the biggest change from the program that you inherited that you've seen up to this point? Um, they, Cherry can probably answer that better. She's been here longer. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't come here uh, and talk to any previous coaches, any previous players. I judge people on uh, my um, – my dealings with them. And um, I saw some games in years past. I've played in some of those games as an opposing coach in years past. Um, you don't dwell on the past. Even if the past was good, what you have to do is you have to teach in the moment and you have to do it as good a job as you can with the players that you've inherited and the players that come, you transfer in, uh, the new signees, and um, that's, what, that's what I did. That's what our staff did. 
uh, can't compare anything to the previous um, the previous years really um, I know about the nine wins um, and things like that but I didn't just break down a lot of film on on these players that I inherited I don't I don't need to do that. I can coach them every day. My eyes won't fail me. And I don't have preconceived opinions about any player. So it's like a fresh start for them. Um, you know, sometimes uh, when you've been with kids, um, you know, you, you get tired of them and you don't, you know, think maybe they can do certain things. But if you're fresh and you're new and you don't have any history with them, it can be, you know, a, a good start, a, a new start for them. And so that's that's all I did when I got here is set with each of them individually, set with them as a team, and let's go to work. Uh, back to the players. Uh, Jalen, Missouri, obviously, they beat South Carolina. They're 13 and 3. You talked about the shooting, but what do you guys have to do well to win this game tomorrow night? Um, for one, <laughs> stop Joe penetration. Um, two, we got to rebound. Just honestly, just play our game and execute. You know, we can't get out of what we do. You know, we got to do what we do best, and that's run the ball. And, um, you know, we got guard play. We got bigs. So, so I mean, not South <laughs> Missouri. Missouri's a good team. You know, you never know what you're going to get with them. You don't know if they're going to, you know, be that three-point shooting team that they can be or they're going to be uh, Dennis Rodman's on the board. So, we just, we just got to play our game. We got any more questions for – Y'all did good. Thank you. Thank you. On to that point, uh, what do they do differently that other teams that you, you guys have played, Missouri? Well, I don't know that they do things differently. I think. The beautiful part of athletics and, and, and sports is the unexpected. And um, they beat South Carolina without their leading scorer, their double-double production player in Blackwell. Um, and that scares you to death when you see that. So you break down the film and then you go, they didn't do anything that they don't normally do against South Carolina. They hit timely threes. Um, and they were playing at home. I always say when you play at home, uh, it is an advantage if you've got a good crowd. Um, and then I watch other film, and they lose to Missouri State by 28, and then they go to overtime with Auburn on their home floor. So it's, it's – and they're the same team. So I don't know if it's um, – Injuries, I don't know if it's missing shots. Uh, what I do know is there's nothing any different that they are going to do. Uh, pretty much when you've reached this point of your season, you might tweak a thing here and there offensively or defensively, but you got to score with South Carolina and you got to rebound with South Carolina. And, um, and they did it that night. I know you've talked about the point guard being uh, an extension of you on the floor out there. I'd imagine that that relationship has to be pretty strong. So how quickly did it take for you and Kayla to kind of build that trust and build that bond uh, after you arrived here? Well, it does take time, but I think both of us realize we don't have time. She has one year. And um, you, you try to um, build it by making her a captain. You try to build it by making sure the ball's in her hands and she's the one shooting when we need big, um, you know, something big to happen on the floor. You have to challenge her. I can't treat her with kid gloves. If you're going to be the leader, you're going to get the brunt of, of my coaching for two reasons. One, you play the position I played, and that's the quarterback on the floor. That's the coach on the floor. And you're going to get all the blame, and you're going to get all the praise. It starts with the quarterback. And so you challenge her maybe a little bit more than you challenge others. And then secondly, you make sure you praise her and don't take her for granted. Kim, now that you fired your free throw coach. Well, <laughs> I hired him back the last game. 
I, I gave that coach another chance, and uh, I think they redeemed themselves. Okay, so have you taken a, a different approach with free throws, and what no, is your philosophy? No. Is it just get over it? or? Yes, you shoot them in, enough in practice. Uh, you, you, you don't overemphasize it. Um, you know, it's – I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't overemphasize it. But we do enough shooting in practice, enough shooting in situations where you put a little pressure on them, um, and just keep playing. You never go into their stroke. Oh, how, how I never shoot. touch anybody. Look, in 37 years, I'm not about to change anybody's shot. It can be the ugliest shot in America as long as it's productive. I've coached uh, all Americans that had the absolute most ugly shots, but I couldn't take them off the floor because they could rebound the heck out of the ball and they could defend. Uh, I, when you reach this level, you might make a suggestion or two, like if you miss a free throw or you're 0 for whatever, just back off the lane, take a deep breath, quit thinking about it so much. You may make those kinds of suggestions, but you don't ever change someone's shot at this, at this stage. I don't anyway. Um, you've also put some emphasis on drawing charges, and um, uh, I'd like for you to comment on that team-wise, and then if you've ever seen somebody like Jalen Cherry who seems to relish it as much as she does. Well, taking charges is a part of your defensive um, intensity and being in the correct position. I'm not one of these that thinks you need to try to get a charge all the time because I think it uh, sometimes it it's not a you know it just takes away from the game but there are moments and times if you're in the right position it's a toughness is what it is there's a difference in taking a charge um, that is uh, a knowledgeable uh, change of pace in the game man we need something to happen on the defensive end and then that just pure toughness to do it I love those but you know if you're just flopping and you're flopping and you're flopping nobody wants to see any of that uh, but she has a knack for when the bigs are running down the floor. You better be alert to where she is because she's not afraid to get in front of you. Kim, uh, y your net is 16 today. Uh, Charlie Cream has you on the three line this week. Can uh, we stop the season now? Well, sure. That means sure. we would get to host, know, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, baby. I, I know it's very early. That's why I'm All right. you. Do you pay attention to those things? Do you want them to pay attention to those things? Are, are, do you adjust any, any goals or aspirations from where you were to start the season? Because, frankly, no one saw you at, 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 outside your program anyway at, at this point, at any point this season. Scott, there's a lot of basketball left to be played. I love that we in women's basketball have people that talk about it and do those things, uh, but I don't put much stock in what is written or said because – that's just an opinion. But what I do through the course of the season is evaluate, did I sell our team short? Were our goals too low? Our goals will be the same. But now it may be a goal as we continue to do well. It may be that I go back in there and say, we might need to add this. I'm not, you know, going to not reward them and make them think like that. If that's putting pressure on them, then let's see if we can handle the pressure. Um, yes, we're very aware that if we win one more game, we're going to celebrate. You know why? Anybody in here know why if we win one more? Bingo. I don't think you can have a losing season. Yeah. I don't think you can have a losing season. At least I'm trying to figure that this, this next one may be the magical number. But is that really what I really want to celebrate at this point? But we're going to acknowledge it. We're going to acknowledge it. That's a big deal. Um, so those are the kinds of things we talk about in the locker room. Um, obviously, getting to the postseason Finishing the upper half of the league, those things won't change. Um, but because you mentioned uh, if you continue to, to, to possibly get a, a postseason bid and your, your seating is high, wouldn't that be fun? My gosh, look at how many we had at the South Carolina game. Can you imagine if we got to host? That would be fun. And I hope, I hope that we can do that. But if we don't, that doesn't mean
that we didn't excel this year. That doesn't mean we didn't we didn't do more than maybe people thought or maybe we should have done. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm aware of, of those types of things being talked about, not because I read them, but my coaches put little things on my desk and go, look at this. And I get a chuckle and laugh. And, um, but in a good way, in a good way, because you want to be talked about, you want to be relevant. And um, that's what these kids are fighting is, is to be relevant. You guys got time for a couple more questions. In what was ultimately a six point game, South Carolina went 18 for 32 from the free throw line. With the way Missouri can shoot from outside, how much of an emphasis are you putting on, you know, maybe limiting putting them on the line? Well, if you're shooting it that much from the outside, you're probably not going to the line very much. So let's go back to what those kids said about dribble penetration. Those perimeter threes are being created from dribble penetration from another player. You get sucked in because you've been taught to be a great teammate and, and help and, and get to help side. And if your teammate gets beat, help. And that's when they kick it out for the three. And uh, we, have to, we have to first stop dribble penetration and then hope that they miss enough threes that we don't allow that second shot. And how do you do that? You keep them off of the offensive boards. They have a lineup that we can match up with really good inside, and then they also have a lineup we don't match up good because everybody shoots the three for them. And so um, we've just got to be very um, – we got to be very tuned in to matchups defensively on who's in the game. Um, they beat the number one team in the country, and nobody else seems to have been able to do that. And imagine they did it without Blackwell. That's, that's just so impressive. This season, you guys, after the Florida Gulf Coast game, you've been really consistent. How have you gotten this team to constantly perform each and every game? I, I think you just work. I think you you teach, you work, um, you you get in the film room, you um, you just have a group in there that they're just mature. You've got a group of seniors that have been in this league and have played at this level, and um, they just don't get too high and they don't get too low, and um, you 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 can't imagine the teaching that has taken place since his staff has been here. And it's not running them and it's not, you know, do it's teaching how to, to carry yourself with confidence. It's teaching you how to want the ball in your hands when the game's on the line. It's teaching you how to defend certain players in the league and listen. And with that, you have a little bit of success, winning. And then that winning builds their confidence. And then it gets the crowd here. It's just like a snowball effect. And um, they now, you know, they're not always the ones that are hunting. Now they can go into games and say, hey, we're being hunted now. And that, that has to be a great feeling for them, for, for a lot of them that have never been able to say that. Finish with Brian and Harrison. All right, you talked about Asia being out for that South Carolina game. Looks like she was back. and. I think she had 14, 15 rebounds in her last game. Just what's kind of the challenge there? And then after you assess the South Carolina tape for you and that battle on the boards, do you adjust anything knowing that obviously uh, she's a challenge? Well, you can't grow inches. You can't grow athleticism overnight. Um, we know that she is just a tremendous, she's a double-double for them. Um, and we know what we face. So what we have to do is we have to know where she is. We have to know where they all are. We have to know her tendencies, her moves, and you better get a body on her. She rebounds. You're talking about Blackwell. She rebounds a lot of her own misses, and that's what the good players do. And so um, just prepare them as best you can and go compete. And if we compete against them like we have against really just about everybody we've played, then we have to accept whatever the results are. You hope the results are a win, but if they played lights out and we played lights out and they hit one more shot or made one more free throw, then we walk off that floor disappointed but prepare for the next game.
Just for you personally as a coach, how important was it for you to arrive here and have you know, a talented uh, veteran like Kayla, someone that really gets LSU, has been here for four years? Did that make your transition any easier? I think I've said it many times, and I'll repeat it loud and clear again. I thank Nikki Fargus and the previous staff for the players they recruited here. I thank Kayla and Cherry and Foss for staying because they certainly didn't have to. I did not come here where I had nothing to work with. There were pieces here in place. Now, they didn't win, nine wins, that's all they had. I don't care about that either. All I care about are those kids that I inherited and they've bought into what we're doing and I'm forever grateful that I had them here to, to do what we're doing this year.